Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. Well, it's nearing the time for the Christmas Ornament Challenge of 2018. Submission period is November. Remember that it's open to all crafts and there's no video requirement this year. It will be a lot of fun. To that end, I thought I'd turn this ornament and it's out of persimmon that uh, was given by John uh, from the Golden Spike Club and a bit of walnut. But I thought, well, do I want an, a sphere? Do I want something elongated? Well, if it's elongated, it turns into an ellipse and loosely would be an oval, but the exact term is an ellipse. So why not make a perfect ellipse? And by perfection, I mean using the golden mean ratio so that the ratio of the, the length and the diameter is the golden mean or 1.618. But unlike the octagon method where you can actually calculate a regular polygon to guide you, an ellipse doesn't have that. But actually we can do it because it can be mathematically defined. So this is a chart that I prepared that uh, relative to the length has the diameter at, and its ratio, the diameter at then three points in between that and the end, so that then, by connecting the dots in the final turning, we have a golden mean perfect ellipse. So let's turn this perfect ellipse Christmas ornament for this year's challenge. John of the Golden Spike Club gave me this piece of persimmon. It looks to be a very dense, fine-grained wood. It feels dry. I hope that is true. It is small enough to fit in my chuck jaws, so that is how I start off rounding it. But, of course, that is only enough for while I cut a tenon to hold it better in the chuck. With the wood now officially held securely in the jaws, I can finish rounding the wood into a smooth cylinder. This is beautiful turning wood. Now for the paperwork and the math part. I've measured the length and the diameter. Since I want them in the same ratio as the golden mean, I check to see which is the limit. It is the length. So, to maintain the golden mean, I need to reduce the diameter a smidgen. I'll do that later. With my phone calculator, I calculate the numbers that multiply by the length of my cylinder. One for the diameter at the middle, one quarter to each end, one half to each end, and three quarters to each end. I am laying out all the lines on the cylinder and noting the diameters on a piece of paper. Next, I am reducing the diameter outside each line to the appropriate measure on both sides of center. A peeling cut with a skew works great except for small sections on the headstock side. With the wood on both sides, it is easier to use a parting tool. It is easier to start with a small cut away from the line, test that, then it, when it is too big, I can reduce to that line, then cut a little more away from the line, test it, and so on. The inner points define the points on the ellipse. With all that done, I grab a spindle gouge and cut a smooth curve between the inner point of each line from the center to the end. From this point, I am going solely by eye. It would be really tough to do any calculations to actual. My favorite negative rake scraper, my skew, helps to refine my curve. I use a shear cut with the gouge for high points. I'm going to drill the center with a 1 half inch Forstner bit. Since that bit is not long enough, I'm finishing up with a longer twist bit. I'm drilling completely through the wood with the same bit. I'll use finials to plug the holes. Now for hollowing. I'm using my straight DIY hollowing tool made from an old Allen wrench. Maybe I should have made the bottom hole a bit bigger for hollowing, but I manage. There's a bit too much wood near the top that I could not reach. I did not dare with this short handled tool. Not much to see here, I'll speed through it. No one will ever feel inside. This is only to reduce the weight.
After a thorough sanding, I'm applying shellac friction polish to this end of the oval. Now for the top end. I've taped the oval and inserted it into my chuck jaws. A 2 inch gasket salvaged from a PV setting for the infinite access chuck is a perfect fit to cushion and hold my oval in the jaws. Had it been different, I would have cut the gasket to allow it to expand or shrink to fit. I'll round off this end again with my spindle gouge and skew. After a thorough sanding, I'm again applying shellac friction polish to complete the finish on the oval. Now for the finials. I have a piece of walnut between centers. Before any shaping, I like to cut a tenon on both ends. With a tenon, I can later hold the finial in my long nose jaws for final cutting and finishing. For now, I want to start the shape at the base. Since my top finial is very short, I'm doing most of the shaping now. After sanding, I took the wood over to the saw for cutting, then remounted it into the long nose jaws for finishing and drilling for the hanger. With the longer section of walnut again mounted to the chuck, I realized I did not start the shaping. Oh well, I'm cutting a new tenon on the walnut. Now that the finial is reversed and mounted by its base, I can better visualize its shape. When turning a finial, it is not always to the right. I know it could be flipped, but this is easier for me. I've turned the lathe speed up close to maximum. I gradually work down the finial until it looks good to me. It was a bit chunky to start with. For ornaments, I don't want them extremely thin because children will likely handle them. Plus, I always put a blunt end for the tip. Then sand and finish the finial with friction polish. When done, I assemble with white glue and add a hanger loop. There you have it, my first ornament for this Christmas season and this year's Christmas ornament challenge. The time for submitting ornaments is during the month of November. Let's see your best ornaments. We dropped the video requirement so anyone can enter. Let's see some great work from whatever craft you practice. This ornament was fun and not difficult to turn. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.